Hello everybody! This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here with my very awesome guest star. I have come back from the grave, my kids. I am J53518, part of the only universe of blue tubers with good old Tiger Dude. But check out my J5 review. Right now, we're here to talk about Grandma's Kisses, requested by <laughs> Rocky Tuck. So Grandma's Kisses is about when Spongebob makes a stop to his good old grandmother's house. But things get a little too much for the sponge when she gets overattached to him, including Patrick, who takes over the whole grandma's loving, which not only makes him be a mature sponge grandmother, but has him being derailed by everybody that we can't about because he's called a grandma's boy. And he's it hurts his little heart saying he's not a mature little sponge as he is. So Spongebob has to deal with his grandma while doing his everyday routines. Oh, the love just lies on this episode. I have to say that I loved watching Grandma's Kisses. I think it's just a wonderful episode. I think it's a wonderful introduction to SpongeBob's grandma, who is voiced by Marion Ross. And I think whoever casted Marion Ross to voice his grandma, just brilliant job. Grandma is what most grandmothers would be, you know. They're very sweet, they're very down to earth. They're gonna get overly attached to their grandsons, their granddaughters. So I think the episode does a really good job with that. The writers just did a very great job with SpongeBob trying to act all grown up for his grandmother. But no matter how old you get, you know, you're always going to be a baby to your grandmother or even for parents in general. So I think the episode has a very great message in terms of that. And there's lots of great moments like Patrick being spoiled by grandma, freaking eating all the cookies like a <laughs> vacuum cleaner. <laughs> It's a simple episode, but I do feel like how the writers handled the simple episode of just Spongebob spending time with his grandmother and getting jealous of Patrick, getting more attention. I thought the episode handled that very well. And not only is it just a funny episode, but I think it's so sweet. The only flaw I've always had with this episode, even when I was young, is how much of a jerk Squidward and the rest of the fishes at the Krusty Krab were to SpongeBob just because Grandma gave him a kiss in the forehead. I mean, it's like, Squidward, you're going to tell me you don't get a kiss from your grandma? And the same for all the other douchey fishes at the Krusty Krab. Mm -hmm. Are you going to tell me you didn't get kissed by your grandmas either? Like, okay. that, that always bugged me a little. But overall, it's a funny, simple and very heartwarming most of all. I think it combines all of those elements so well. So Grandma's Kisses, I think it's a fantastic episode and I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. I agree. And I gotta agree with what Tony said here as I have headphones back in here right here. Um, it reminds me of when I was a kid, you know, whenever uh, sometimes when I was around my grandma and I was eight years old, then my grandma would always embarrass me, hug me and kiss me. I'm like, okay, grandma, I'll just happened. I do see the connection this episode got me. And I was I was eight when I, when I was 10 when I saw this. And that brought back that memory of that, you know, your parents, I mean, that's the thing, like Tony just said, this movie, this, this movie, ugh. this episode was a very good way of getting to that inner family kind of, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, you're always going to be their child and they love you and they care for you. Who cares if you're a drug dealer? I'm sorry to mention that. Or whatever you become as an adult, you'll always be in their heart, the little boy and girl you used to be. And that means so much to them in their hearts. And that made me cry a bit as a kid. Just, and, and that was when I saw that episode. I didn't even visit my grandma, so I cried. And that was kind of a little... I think it was a very good idea to capture that emotion and that care that, that parents and grandparents have for their children. And it, it goes beyond whatever force it goes in the world. Oh, boy. But Patrick, where are your parents? Oh yeah, they, they live in the rock, but they're buried under the sand. Jesus Christ. This episode with your sister in there, for fuck's sake. Damn it, Patrick. He decided to go with the gig to become adults and not have tiered to grandma's wishes. But two minutes into their plan, Patrick becomes a dumbass, takes off the suit, and then climbs into a baby chair and demands grandma eating him cookies. And eat him like a vacuum cleaner? What the fuck? <gasps> what is he, Kirby? What? No. He's not Kirby. And the whole idea of being mean, you shouldn't be embarrassed with your parents. I mean, yeah, if they come around at the wrong moment, yeah, but if you're with your family, you should feel comfortable, not ridiculed. I give this episode a 5 out of 5. Sweet. 
Now me and Jake Five are here to review Squidville, and the episode is requested by Rocky <sighs> Tuck. So J5, what is Squidville about? Tuck it up, Rocky. Just kidding. Aaron, sexual joke. Aaron, what up? Uh, Squidville's about they kind of like the movie. You know, remember, you guys remember the movie Pleasantville when everything was very same and monochrome? You know, starring Tobey Maguire, Reese Witherspoon, Jeff Daniels. You know that. Well, take that premise, put it with Squidward. Put it on the outskirts of Bikini Bottom and Squidville or Squidville Towers. That's the movie. The episode. Basically, Squidward is tired of Spider and Patrick being a bunch of dumbasses. He says, you know what? I'm going to get out of this house. I'm going to go find a place where I'm accepted. And where does he go to? Squidward Homes. Squidville Homes. A place where all Squidwards, I swear everyone is a goddamn Squidward. That scared the fuck out of me as a kid. Like how much bonking was going on in the Squid. I'm just kidding. There's squid dogs, girls with wigs that look like Cher. What the hell? Everything was perfect for Squidward. But as the episode, I mean, there's everything. There's movie theater, there's ballet, there's canned bread. Damn, like that's new. I thought back at that time when it came out, I thought the new iPhones were interesting. Moving on. Anyway, you learn that Squidward, the place is not as perfect as it is. Plus, we get something involved with a hairdryer, with a leaf blower. That comes into play. And it's Squidward's experience in Squidville and how he reacts to his surroundings. So what do I think? I think this episode was good. It has a good sense of that Twilight Zone feel. You know, the whole perfect world, not the way it used to be. Squidward doing the same thing over and over, riding his bike, getting the bread, go to ballet, do clarinet, go to sleep. Get in ballet, get in camp bread, go to play, go to sleep. I thought Squidward would go to different points and you know, you know, break up in, in insanity, but apparently that didn't happen. Damn it. But you know what? It was good to see that SpongeBob and Patrick were very interested to see all the squid words. Come on, SpongeBob, you're not that much of a damn idiot. They're not all squid word. They're squids, but they look okay, they look similar, but they have different voices and sexualities, you dumb little square bastard. But anyway, the ending, as you all know, one of the funniest and not the most random moments in squid mania in SpongeBob history. I give, I give Squidville a four out of five stars. What are your awesome. thoughts on Squidville? I actually think Squidville is awesome. I love the idea of Squidward moving into this town that's filled with his kind. The whole entire town is squids. I mean, the episode's called Squidville for a reason. But I thought that was really cool. And then Squidward, obviously, he's seen that life isn't so perfect. He sees that it's actually boring after a while. But it's kind of cool for Squidward to kind of realize maybe life isn't as perfect as I would want to be. Like... It's like no matter how much you want life to be perfect, it's never, ever going to be perfect, no matter how right. badly you want it. And I think that's what the episode was trying to go for in its message. The episode is really funny, too, just like with Grandma's Kisses. There, there's plenty of humor for me to laugh at. Um, SpongeBob and Patrick going crazy with their reef blower in the beginning of the episode is hysterical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> SpongeBob and Patrick are not in this episode that much, but when they are in this episode, they are both really funny together. And I think it's very sweet how SpongeBob and Patrick wanted to apologize to Squidward by baking him this I'm sorry cake. I guess because it gets real boring, Squidward's getting to that point where he's becoming the SpongeBob and Patrick of Squidville. I love the writing with Squidville. I thought the storyline was very well thought out. It was very creative. Love the humor behind it. And it really is just an entertaining episode. The only flaws I do have with Squidville is just like that, you know, that whole montage with Squidward doing the same thing over and over and over again. It gets a little repetitive and it, it kind of does drag the episode just a little. Also, while I do think the episode's ending was very funny, I thought the ending was rather abrupt. Like it just kind of ends. Overall, Squidville, I do think is a fantastic episode. I think it's just as great as Grandma's Kisses, so that means I'm going to give it the same rating, which is a 9 out of 10. Boom, boom, hell yeah. So everyone, in the comments down below, please let me know what did you think of the episodes Grandma's Kisses and Squidville, and please check out J5351H's channel. I will leave a link to his channel in the description below. No worries. Whenever I'm in the realm of Tiger Dude, he will always... 
have tiger power. See you guys. Adios. Bring me some cookies.